Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa Bhutang Sarananga Chami Dhammang Sarananga Chami Sangang Sarananga Chami <coughs> Dityampi Bhutang Sarananga Chami Dityampi Dhammang Sarananga Chami Dityampi Sangang Sarananga Chami Tatiyampi Bhutang Sarananga Chami Tatiyampi Dhammang Sarananga Chami Tatiyampi Sangang Sarananga Chami So hello everybody, this is Bhante Joe here and I'm just here at a village Kuti in Koskandawala and was asked a question a couple of weeks ago now about Metta and Mudita and so we were doing the meditation course and a gentleman asked if I could pass along the affirmations for metta and mudita, the, the words that are used during the guided meditation. And then asked if we're feeling an emotion like jealousy, if we're feeling jealousy towards somebody, um, should we spread it to that person specifically or to all beings? So oftentimes we find in meditation that there can be words that are employed in conjunction with the focus on the object. Now some of these words actually don't directly come from the canon. So uh, for breath meditation, sometimes one will think Buddha on the in-breath, Do on the out-breath. Or for a Subha meditation, sometimes one will just repeat the name of the body part. You know, the heart, heart. Heart. One can repeat it in conjunction with the breath. One can just repeat this name if one gets tired of trying to visualize and trying to think about its loathsome aspects in different ways. So, oftentimes, because we have this very fast association, we have an association with a word and a quality, sometimes just repeating the word itself uh, or repeating an affirmation, a series of words themselves, those can be enough to bring up the feeling or the perception that we're aiming at in its base form. It's one way that one can employ, um, employ a meditation topic, one way that one can approach a meditation topic that has, that has particular advantages in particular situations and disadvantages in other situations. So for Mudita and Upeka, sometimes I'll, if I teach a guided meditation for Mudita, I'll say something like, um, may all beings do well May they not be parted from the good fortune they've attained. It's a little something from the English language uh, translation that, I, that we used to chant in the monastery where I ordained. And the one for Upeka is, uh, uh, all beings are the owners of their kamma, their heir of their kamma. And basically, all beings are the, they, I, can't, I sometimes change that one up. All beings are the owners of their kamma, uh, basically establishing a mind neither attracted to or repelled by all beings, and spreading equanimity. So one can vary the words in each of these cases according to one's taste, according to what suits one. But generally, they should convey the idea that one wants them to convey. One can go too far if one focuses really on just getting the precise word to evoke a particular feeling. Because there's an aesthetic to words. Right? There's, there's an aesthetic to them. They can be beautiful, they can be pleasing. When they're arranged really, really well, like poetry, then they can definitely be evocative. They can bring forth certain feelings. But the particular arrangement of those words, like any aesthetic, sometimes depends just on novelty. As the, the beauty of a poem wears off the more that we hear it. <laughs> so here in these meditations, some people are verbal, the words or affirmations themselves can be helpful, but the main thing behind the meditation is the intention. So for Mudita, for Upeka, and for the other Brahma Viharas, for Metta, usually they just say, may all beings be well. Um, uh, may, may all beings uh, be well. May they put, may all beings be well. May they be happy and at ease. May they put in place the causes to be happy and at ease. And for Karuna, usually just say, uh, maybe say something like, may no being suffer, may they be free from stress and pain. 
And also you wish, may they put the causes in place to be free from stress and pain. <laughs> so these affirmations, they're good if they bring up the right feeling, but behind it all is this intention. And so the intention is the main thing. So after one gets used to the affirmation, and one gets used to what specific type of intention we're trying to spread. Now here with all of the Brahma Viharas, there's a recognition that beings are the owners of their actions. So for Mudita, for Metta, for Karuna, uh, for Mudita being empathetic joy, for those who don't know the translation, Metta being goodwill, Karuna being compassion, Upeka, there's a recognition that beings are the owners of their Kamma. All of the Buddha's practices come underneath this doctrine of Kamma. In other words, what we're doing here is we're building something conditioned, we're putting conditions into place, and that means it falls under this doctrine of Kamma. Now, Kamma is intention. So, what it means is that the, in, the actions that all these beings take, based on their intentions, they're going to get the results. I mean, there's things we can do to help them. Right? <laughs> we can wish goodwill for somebody, may you be well. We can have compassion for them, may you not suffer. Um, we can have empathetic joy, oh, it's great that you did well. We can have equanimity, all beings are the owners of the Kama. But in all these cases, there's a recognition that for us to get the results that we want for these beings, for these beings to have the effects that we hope for them, they've got to do the work themselves. We can aid, we can help, we can encourage, but at the end of the day, the main thing is their intention. So this is, some, this is a really important aspect of all of the Brahma Viharas that one can include in one's affirmation, but more importantly has to be behind the intention of spreading the Brahma Vihara. The second aspect is the quality of the Brahma Vihara itself. So metta, being goodwill, should not tip over into love, like uh, feeling the sense of love, because that gets joined up with hate. Uh, karuna being compassion should not tip over into this sense of like sadness, like uh, uh, despondency, because that's not helpful. <laughs> and mudita, or empathetic joy, shouldn't tip over into servility. And so, in other words, you're happy for other people, but if somebody tries to beat you at something, or you're in a competition with somebody, and somebody behaves to you in ways that indicate that they're trying to undermine you, or maliciously attack you, not in a win-win situation, then one has to block that. So this mudita should not shade into servility. And equanimity, upeka, should not shade into indifference. Well, all beings are the owners of their kama, they, and he fell in the ditch, <laughs> won't help them out. They should have been more, uh, more mm, you know, mindful. So the intention that one wants to have is this background aspect that beings are the owners of their kama. So we basically cannot save the world by doing things for people. <laughs> you know, exclusively, we can help. We can't save the whole world. We can't, we can't uh, rewrite the world. All beings are making their own kama every minute and the suffering or happiness that they experience will come from their intentions. Primarily, it can also come from gifts we give, but everything comes back to the mind. So their intentions are of paramount importance. So what this means is that in addition to this, this intention that we're spreading this with the recognition that all beings are the owners of their kamma, there's also this effect, this feeling, not tipping too far, not tipping too far forward, too far behind. Feelings of mudita, or empathetic joy, if we have it, but not servility. Feelings of upeka, equanimity, if we spread it, but not indifference. Feelings of goodwill, but not like love, like attaching love. And feelings of karuna, but not dejection. <coughs> now when we have this intention in place, whether we use the affirmation or we use the, just the intention, then <coughs> if we notice, say, we're jealous towards a specific person, we can spread goodwill or spread uh, mudita to that person, happy that they've gotten the successes that they have. But again, knowledge that they've gotten the success, happiness of the successes that they've had uh, should also come with a recognition they've put into place good actions to get the success. And here we're empathetic joy for the goodness that they've done, the good kama they've created that's led them to this situation. But as Ajahn Tanisra made this really excellent point in another talk, is basically we have to have also a kind of uh, like compassion or sometimes equanimity, sometimes goodwill for them as well, because 
people who get success often start to undermine the very good qualities that led them there. And if they were generous, became wealthy, if they were empathetic, they had empathetic joy and became powerful. When they become wealthy, when they become powerful, sometimes wealthy people become stingy. <laughs> sometimes powerful people become uh, power mongers. They become jealous people. They don't want other people to rise uh, to the same level that they did. So this empathetic joy, when we're spreading it, we spread it to that person. We can spread it to them specifically wishing, may you not be parted from the good fortune you've attained, but recognizing they've got to put the good causes into place for that. And so it's not like if somebody becomes a world dictator and we're happy that they're a dictator. We recognize they did a lot of good kama that enabled them to have this influence, but they're misusing it. So we also have this equanimity. We also have this um, compassion for them because they'll suffer because of that. So similarly with equanimity, if one is spreading equanimity towards a person that one is jealous of or whatever it might be, then, uh, then one doesn't want it to tip too near or too far. So once these causes are in place, the intention is right when is spreading it to that person. One wants to observe the effect on one's mind. Is the feeling coming up of genuine uh, empathetic joy? Is the feeling coming up of dispassion? Well, you know, he's the owner of his actions, just kind of like a person just watching <laughs> and not getting too involved. Is that feeling arising? That'll be the litmus test for whether it's successful or not. You know, kind of, if it isn't, then one has to try a different method. One can try the words. One can try just instead of spreading to that person to spread to them and then out to all beings. Generally though, if it's like an inherent quality of mind that arises a lot, one can do to all beings. But if one is in a really intense situation with a specific person, one can do it to just that person, spreading the Brahma Vihara, Mudita or equanimity um, to just that person. So as far as the spreading of these two things, I'll maybe leave uh, Metta and Karuna out for now since this gentleman's question was only about Mudita and Upeka. Upeka is one that one can spread towards people that one has, <coughs> one has um, like a lot of passion for. You know, kind of, one feels quite a lot of passion for them. So it can be something that one can use to quell hatred, uh, one can use to quell jealousy. But in the suttas, the, de the, def the thing that it's used for is to quell this passion. So you know, you see people, they get really passionate with their hatred, you know, really passionate with their jealousy. And it's usually behind some like really strong cause, you know. So oftentimes you see this in politics. This isn't right, it's unjust. You know? <laughs> or this person rose to the top through all these cruel, horrible means, you know, and one is filled with hatred, filled with jealousy, whatever it might be. This upeka can take the edge off of that jealousy. It's used to quell passion. But uh, also one can employ other Brahma Viharas. So as with any other meditation topic, there's many ways that one can approach the topic to get the right result. One can try the affirmation, one can try changing the words, but one wants to be wary of getting lost in the aesthetic of the words themselves because that wears off real fast. One can try spreading just to that person if it's a really intense situation and see if one gets it right. See if one's, the feeling comes up and the negative feeling goes down. One can try spreading first to that person, then out to everybody, and see if this helps. And one can spread just to all beings if it's a general, a general uh, way of approaching the topic, general kind of um, negative mind state that often arises. But in all these things, one wants to make sure it's well balanced, not tipping too far or too near. And the litmus test for all these meditation topics is, are our wholesome qualities increasing and our unwholesome ones decreasing? <laughs> So whatever way one does it, that's how one tells if it's being successful or not. But the thing to keep in mind too is that the Buddha says of these topics, they're an escape for things. You know, so metta is the escape for hatred, karuna is the escape for cruelty. One can imagine mudita is the escape for jealousy, and upeka is the escape for passion. So one shouldn't think that I've developed this topic properly, but I'm still having jealousy. I've developed the mudita properly, but I still have jealousy. I've developed upeka properly, but I still have all this passion because these are the, these are the things, what these last two one can infer, these are the, the escape from these things. These are the topics that lead to the ending of these things. So there is a way 
there's going to be a way to develop them to get rid of this negative mind state. It's just a matter of finding it through experimentation, through effort and perseverance. <laughs> so those are a few thoughts on mudita and upeka and using affirmations for them, spreading them just to one person, spreading them to all beings and a couple things in between. So with that, I think I'll end the talk and wishing everybody all the blessings of Dhamma practice.